Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it is another trying to fix video and we are trying yet another Nintendo Switch. Now I know that would upset quite a few people but then again a lot of other people love doing it and for me I really like doing them because, oh we have broken bits in here, uh, because it means that I've done a few of them now so it's not a complete and utter nightmare for me. Some of the, sometimes it can be but when you're always doing new things it actually can be just a little bit stressful. Sometimes it's nice to do something where you've just got a little bit of knowledge. So this was sent to me by Mike from 1UP Gaming and it says no power tried with another battery still nothing. Looks like previous owner may have replaced USB-C slight scorching on the board near it. So let's first of all plug in our little USB meter here and let's see if it's trying to draw anything and that will give us an idea of uh, whether it's charging or if it's trying to turn on or whatever. Right so I can see there it says zero amps so it's not doing anything. Nothing, it's like not being plugged in whatsoever. Okay, let's I don't know if I've ever had one of them before. Turned it around the other way just in case there's a USB-C problem. And look, it's still not drawing anything whatsoever. So, okay, that's uh, that's not a good start. Let's take it apart and see if we can see anything on the inside. So it looks like some of these corner bits have broken. Cover off and, well, initially looks okay. Initially it does look okay. So, oh, okay, that battery wasn't properly clipped in. Let's just give it a little reading now, see if it's any different. Probably was making a contact. Let's just see if that's changed anything. No, so it's not attempting to charge at all. Now, out of everything on the Nintendo Switch, the things I hate the most is anything to do with the USB-C port, because it's just a nightmare to change over because of the row of hidden pins. So now, I think what we're going to have to do here is, see, there's no point in putting it in the dock or anything, because it's, it's not doing anything. You know what I mean? There's no, It's not drawing any power whatsoever, so it's not going to make a difference putting it in the dock. I think what we should do is take the board out and then check for... Take the board out now or shall I just cut the power? I'll tell you what, before I do anything, well mind you, I'm going to need to take the board out anyway. If I'm going to be changing out any chips, I need to take the board out. So let's pop the board out of it and then uh, check around all the chips for shorts and the capacitors. Actually, before I do anything, I should check for voltage on that battery, shouldn't I? a 3.7 battery I think fully charged are about 4.2 or 4.3 let's see if we have anything on it at all well, isn't that interesting nothing at all how's that possible you would think it would be giving me something Right, okay, well, I'm not going to take it apart just yet. I'm going to get another battery and place it in there, then see if it's drawing anything. I've never seen it where the battery has nothing. Like, even fully depleted, I thought it still had, like, 2 point something volts. But this is nothing. That weird. Unless there's a short or something. I wonder, could there be some sort of short that's drained every single bit of uh, power from this? No. Well, okay, uh, let me get another battery. So I found this battery here. It's not fully charged, but it is 3.7 volts, so it should give us enough to do something. If you look there, 3.7. So let's pop this one in. And now let's see what's happening with this. Still saying zero. Okay.
strange. I'm just gonna unplug it and plug it in see if it makes any difference at all. No, that hasn't made any difference at all. Right, okay. Uh, Let's have a little look in the USB port, see what it looks like. I'm just going to get my eye loop, and if it looks weird, then I'll uh, zoom in on the camera. Right, looking through the eye loop, it looks okay when I actually look in the pins here. They do look to be all right, but I'm not so sure about the actual pins on the board. They all look to be very loose. So, let's zoom right in and uh, give them a wiggle and see if they're moving. This is them here. These are not attached. None of these are attached. Right, I wonder have we still got the pads underneath them? And also I wonder if we've got shorts. So it looks like none of these are actually attached to where they're supposed to be going. So for example, if we were to look at this one here, I've got my meter on continuity. Can you see we've got the little fuse here? Just make sure that this is okay, yeah. Now if you have a look, this should be connected to here but I don't think it's actually connected to, it's on the pad, but look, it's not on there. And also this one here is not on there. Right, so we need to resolder all of them. Now before I attempt to solder it, I'm gonna clean it with IPA just to try to get a nice connection when it comes to the soldering. Now the reason at the moment I'm only worried about getting it working on one lot of pins is because remember, this is reversible. So obviously it's designed to work both way round. But in order just to do the testing on the switch, I'm thinking if I just get one lot of pins working, then at least then I can see what's wrong with it, because I don't want to spend hours on this if, for example, it's unrepairable because of some other chip or some other problem. Do you know, looking at it here, I'm wondering if it's not soldering because some of the pins are missing. I mean, is that, that pad feels gone. Let's have a look here. Let's get our meter back on. Maybe the old one was ripped off, you see. Right, so it should be going to here, yeah? It's not. No, there's no pad there, look. It's gone. So that's gonna need a jumper wire there. Is this, does this now go into the pin? No, that's missing there as well. Look, can you see? It's uh, uh, it's the IPA that's making it shiny. There's no pads there. There you go, look, these pads are missing. Right, okay. Ah, uh, well this is gonna be probably, I mean I don't know where all these ones are gonna go to. I'll have to have a look on another board. Uh, and I don't know what pads are missing. I suppose really this needs to come off. I think for the time being, let me just run a little jumper just between, because it looks like this is power and I presume my ground is going to be okay. Yeah, the grounds are, uh, well actually that pad there is not, but look, can you see that pad there does look to be intact. So if I was to go to like another ground on the board somewhere. Yeah, so the... Uh, the, the ground is going to be okay. Let's just do a jumper from here to here. Is it even worth doing it on this pin? I suppose I could do it on this pin as well. Maybe. Why would you need to? I'm not sure. But let's uh, let's do that.
let's plug in the battery again and let's see if it's doing anything now. So let's use the existing battery to begin with. And let's see what, uh, what's happening. See if it's drawing anything now that they're connected. Yes, excellent, 0.32 amps, so it's drawing something now. Well, that's good. Let's measure the voltage going into the battery because we know that this battery was completely, completely flat, don't we? 2.7, and it's climbing, look, 2.7, So that says to me that that is now charging. Because look, it's drawing 0.3 of an amp at 5 volts. Excellent, right, that's good. Uh, it's not worth even trying to turn it on because it didn't go to zero. I'll tell you what we'll do, let's unplug it, let's put, pop the good battery in, and then we'll try to turn it on just to see if the good battery does anything different. Excellent, that's gone to a normal voltage, so that's slow charging now. Let's see if it's going to go, sorry, a normal uh, amperage. Is it going to go to zero and turn on? No, so we already know it's not going to turn on. But let's just see if anything comes on the screen or if any uh, backlight or anything happens. Okay, so nothing's coming on the screen there. And I can't see any backlight lighting up there. So let's hold it down for a good 20 seconds or so, just fast forward through it. And this time, see if anything happens. No, nothing happening on there. Nothing happening on here. And the backlight's still not on. So we've definitely got an issue there. I'm just gonna turn it around just to see if it charges the uh, other way as well. No, so you can see it's only charging one way because we've only got these pins. We've only fixed these pins, they're exposed, so the hidden pins are definitely not charging. But you know what, that wouldn't be the end of the world because if this was the side that was docking, because on the on, you only dock the switch one way, so it could be these pins that are the, like, I know you can dock them both ways because you can use a, a portable little dock but in the proper dock, it only docks one way, so it could be these ones that are the important ones. Right, okay, let's, uh, we're not getting anywhere there, but at least we know now that it is charging up. So let's completely take it apart and test some capacitors around the chips. I'll just notice as well that the port broke around here. You can see it's all melted around here. Right, so I've got this out now. So what we're going to do is... Oh, is that a mark I can see on the video chip? Let's zoom in. Now that does not look a happy bunny, does it? Look at that. That's burnt. That has burnt down here. So that's going to need to be replaced. I wonder now, is there other problems as well? Or is it just that? So let's go across a few capacitors. So I've just got my meter set to continuity. Okay, so that's shorted there. Uh, that's shorted there. Now let's just go across this one here. That's shorted there. So that is linked to the video chip being faulty. So maybe I'll pop the video chip off, see if those shorts disappear. See this one here? Above where we've done the little repair. Oh, hold on a minute. Wait. Oh no, that's okay. Let's just see the others. I think they're okay. Let's just check the ones around this chip down here. Right, 
Well, I mean, there might be loads of things wrong with it, but we've seen that there's definitely damage to the video chip here. So let's take this one off here. I'm slightly worried about the one above it because when I did my fault finding before, I think the one above it led to in here. Uh, shall I just try to take this off at the moment? Yeah, let's see if that's gone from up here now. Hopefully it's still there. Excellent. Okay, do you know what? I'm going to pop this one back on. Let's pop the video chip off and see if those shorts go. It's nice to see a bit of damage for a change. My worry is that the pad underneath it might be damaged as well. Which means it's going to be a bit hard. Well, I'm going to put my airflow 5 out of 8 and my temperature is going to be 480 degrees Celsius. Let's get this off. Here it comes. Excellent. Actually, before we do anything with the pin, let's see if the shorts have gone. Fingers crossed they have. Excellent. Brilliant. That's gone. And now let's flip it over to this side. Yay, and that's gone as well. So in this instance, I might be lucky. It might be just a video chip. Right, so I can now see the remains of my pad here. I wonder, am I going to be able to get that back in position? So when I was brushing it with IPA, that's come off there, isn't it? Hmm, I wonder would I be able to solder back onto that? Or would it be best just to run? from here to there. I suppose I could try and solder on it, might take it. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's get the soldering iron on it, because it does look a little bit bigger than the others. And let's see, maybe if I just tap it with the soldering iron, it might completely rip the trace, or it might just lift off the, uh, the damaged leg that's on it. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of flux on there. And then I've got my nice Rage Quit Nintendo Switch. I never get bored of looking at that. The strength on that rage quit must have been amazing look how much that board is bent so i'm going to try to take the video chip out of this one it is kind of in the middle of the bend but we'll give it a go hopefully the video chip might be okay because this was definitely working before the rage incident apparently so it might be a good chip but my solar iron is just heating up so it's going to be a bit cold at the moment i'm just going to rub it up and down here in the hope that it might remove Remove the missing leg. Do you know what? I can't really tell. I don't know if it's solder or whether it is a leg or not that's on there. Let's take this one off here. So that came off nicely. Now I'm going to put it straight on the board here. Add some flux.
I'm just going to zoom in so I can see it jumping to pack. I think it jumped, there we go, look at that, that jumped nicely didn't it? I wonder now, this pin hasn't moved though, has it? Look, this pin hasn't gone to where it needs to go. Oh, that's annoying. Right, I'm going to take it off. Come on, come off. And I'm going to try to move that pin now. Looks like it's soldered itself next to it. Right, I'm going to try it again, I might be more lucky. There we go, that's definitely in its home. And that pin looks better now in the bottom corner. So let's leave it cool and uh, clean it with IPA and then we'll see see what's happening. I'll look closely at this corner to see if it's actually gone in where it needs to. That's been cooling for a couple of minutes now. Let's start trying to clean it off. I'm going to be really gentle with this corner down here. Okay, so let's have a look in here. I'm not sure whether they've made a contact or not, especially that one there, look. I don't think that's made a contact. I'm not sure about that one and that one either. Not sure about these ones. It's hard to tell. Let's have a look on this side. Oh, to be fair, they look like they're gapped on that side as well. I suppose what happens is they make a contact underneath. You know what the pin's underneath? Yeah, okay. Well. Uh, I mean, it definitely pulled into place. So what I'm going to do is let's just put it roughly back together, see what's happening with it, and then I can worry about maybe rubbing a soldering iron over it and trying to get it to uh, look better. Because underneath that, maybe they are all connected. Let's just check for continuity. Right, we're okay there. And now let's just check for... Well, there's no point in checking for continuity because there's going to be continuity on the pads anyway. We just want to know whether there's continuity on the actual between the pads and the chip, which I can't check for. But there's definitely no bridges between the 41 and the one next to it. So let's pop it back together a little bit. First of all, I'm going to plug in the dodgy battery just to see if anything displays on the screen. And then I can plug in the working one. Brilliant! Yes! We've got a symbol! Fantastic! Oh, yes! Right, okay. Uh, but that's not going to charge up for a long time. Uh, it's not going to turn on because that will need to charge up. So shall I just leave it like that or shall I try the other battery? The thing is, I think this battery is depleted as well because it's only showing 3.7. Tell you what, let's put the other battery in. Good, right, can you see that? that's charging there, but then it's gone off. And now it's gone to zero. Oh yes, brilliant. You can't beat that logo, I could never get bored of that. Never get bored of that. Do you know what, I know people, oh yeah. <laughs> I know people say I do the switch too much. It's just that, it feels amazing when you see it come to life. And I think it's because when you do an Xbox or a PlayStation, there's always a bit of time involved. While with the Switch, it's kind of instant. Just within a few seconds, you think it's not working, and then it's working. Well, there you go. Look. I'm so happy with that. I really am so happy with that. Right, let's turn it off fully. So it was just... Why is it not turning off? Ah... Is the touch screen not working properly? The touch... 
every now and then I hear funny noises and I don't know whether it's the battery or whether it's just something hitting against something. Just want to check the touch screen because I couldn't turn it off there. No, there's something wrong with the touch screen. It's not detecting over this area, look. See, I can't get to controllers and sensors. Right, okay. Uh, hmm. And I'm just going to do a little bit of testing. Excellent. Paired blue. And paired red. Fantastic. So that's working. So now what I'm going to do is I just want to test the touch screen. Might not stay on long enough. Here we go. No, can you see there? So look, it's working here, but there, there's a dead spot and then it picks it up. So this area here, which is strange, isn't it? Look, this area here is dead. And here, there's a dead spot there as well. Again, not actually the, well, I suppose it is pretty important, but it's not the end of the world because you can still play it like this, but then on games where you'd want to touch the screen, it's not going to work properly. So that needs to be looked at. I think I'm going to change out that little part there and then see if that starts working. All right, so I found another one here. No, so it's definitely not the card, so it is going to be the digitizer. Let's have a look at the actual ribbon cable on the digitizer and see if we can see anything on that that looks faulty. Right, if you have a look here, can you see there's damage here and here? But the thing is, I don't know whether it's actually gone through or not. I wonder, could I flatten it out? You can definitely see there's like it's dented in. So I'm wondering if those two pins are damaged. Got a spare digitizer here. See now, look in all this area that wasn't working before, is now working. So the this, uh, digitizer needs changing out. So we know it definitely needs a new digitizer, which is not a problem. But I've got nothing to lose by trying to repair the old one. So I'm going to get a fiberglass pen and I'm going to rub across where those two little bits of damage are. And then if I can see one of the tracks are broken it might be possible to bend it back in and touch it with a bit of solder or run a little jumper wire in between there. I really have got nothing to lose. Good news is it's scraping away the black nicely. I think I found the damage on the digitizer. So I, I mean, I don't know if there's going to be more than just this one, but remember, we definitely seen two kind of holes. And I think the first track was here, and that does look damaged there. But look, if I go between here and here, it's actually, hold on, there. You can see it is actually coming up here past the damage bit. But look at this one. This one here is this one here. If I go on there, can you see? Okay, well, that's just because it's coming onto the one next to it. Hold on. Right, so we're talking about this one just here, yeah? Now look, you can hear it here, but not here. Can you see it's gone? There, yes, there, no. So we need to put a tiny bit off. Uh, we need to join that to there. Now, I was thinking about using a wire, but this is so unbelievably small. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tiny bit of conductive paint, and then hopefully it will remain flexible. Because once this is in place, it won't be getting bent much. Once it's in, it shouldn't be getting bent at all once it's in place. Now, I don't know whether there's going to be more damage than just that. But that's definitely damaged there. 
So that could be the cause of that whole section of screen not working. So I'm going to get some conductive paint on that, put a blob on, and then when it's starting to dry, I'm just going to remove it from all the other ones and just leave it on that one there. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Right, so I've still got lots to do. To begin with, I'm not sure what's happening with this battery here. So let's give it a bit of a jump start by using one of these, the TP4056. And then I'm going to connect this up to USB. And then hopefully that will give it the jump start that it needs. And then it might start just charging from the USB port here. Right, so we've got a red light here now, so it means it is actually charging. So I'm going to leave that on there. Now what I'm going to do with this here is I've got some conductive paint. This is only very cheap stuff order away from China and it's all gloopy and gone off and all the rest of it. But I'm hoping I can just get just a tiny little bit out to put it on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually scrape most of it away from the... There you go. You see there? I'm going to scrape most of it away from the other ones. Right, so I'm just going to put it on there like that. Now I'm going to look real closely and try to scrape most of it away. I may need to put more on my faulty track. But I'm just speeding up the drying time just by using it at 100 degrees Celsius but at a distance. Just warming it up ever so slightly. Right, it feels feels like it's gone hard it's also changed color now it's more a whitish color so now I'm gonna look really really closely using this and I'm just gonna scrape it away with my knife anything that's not on that track okay so that's it there now uh, but I can't actually tell whether it's it's just such a mess I can't tell whether it actually made contact or not I don't know whether there's another break in the middle of it there also, for all I know, it could be shortened against the other ones. It's kind of hard to tell because as soon as you put it on, it just sort of spreads everywhere. Again, because we're talking about something which is minute, you need to remember that if you look at my fingernail. But I'm going to put it back together just to see whether it's going to do anything now. Okay, so I've given it a nice good clean up, put it back in, and as you can see, it is now doing this area, but it doesn't seem to be working well I have to squeeze it you see and, and it will go off without me even going off screen normally it should only go off when you go off screen but look can you see now see it's acting weird but at least I proved that that was definitely the fault there but I think this is going to be an unreliable fix even if I do even if I find the exact sweet spot I think it's going to uh, I don't think it's going to work very well So I think we're going to have to put the other digitizer in. So to put in the new digitizer, we're going to have to heat up this area here. We're going to start peeling it off from this side because this is the side where it's actually attached. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to break down any more or whether I can feed it through here or not. Hopefully I can just feed it through here. So let's get the hairdryer on this area here. Right, so remember we're doing this side last, so this side here first. Lovely and easy. Right, I'm going to leave the glue on here. <laughs> and 
and I'm just going to get some canned air to blow that and then we can put this one through the same hole here. I'm just going to make sure that this is out of the way. Yeah, look at that, you don't even have to. Yeah, can you see it's just going to fit straight through there. You can see daylight through it. So let's feed this through to begin with. There we go, straight in. Perfect. Very easy to do with minimal breakdown of the dismantling dismantling off the actual switch itself. So I'm just going to clean the inside of this digitizer. Stick this down. Right, let's connect it back up and let's see now if we have it all working. As far as the uh, digitizer is concerned, then I need to worry about that USB C port. Yay! Fantastic. So I'm happy, I know I didn't fix the other one, but I proved it was just that little bit of damage that can cause it. So that's interesting, so if you were a bit heavy handed with the tweezers, then uh, that would cause that. So now what do I have to do? I have to, let's just double check the game card again. This is not syncing up wirelessly now. Is it just because I haven't got that connected here? Yes, it is. Wow, that really is sensitive if you don't have that aerial connected. I would have thought it would have still worked when it was in such close proximity. Right, what did I say I was going to do? Game card, that's it. Now, let's pop that in here. Excellent, so the game card slot is definitely working. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna work on now. I'm gonna take the board out again. I'm gonna put some UV mask on the video chip because that looks like it's gonna be working okay. And then I need to have a look at this port here, see if there's anything I can do with it. But realistically, it looks like all the pads are ripped off. So I don't think, I think it's just gonna be a, a switch that works in handheld mode, not docked mode. Now looking at this closely through the eye loop, there definitely is a gap there on that pin there and also on the top here there's quite a few pins that don't look like they're connected properly. So the fault's gone because we've removed the faulty chip so the short has gone to ground but this is going to be for video out. Now the chances are I'm not going to be able to get video out working anyway because all these pads look like they're missing here but still I think I need to give this a better go. So I'm going to put some flux around it and then rub it with a very small soldering iron and see if that joins any of the pins up because what I'm hoping is to get the pins on the side of the chip to join with the pads at the bottom.
success is so much easier with the microscope. So if you have a look now, you can see that that one there is connected to the actual pin on the chip itself. So I'm happy with that. And all of the other joints look better. They look like they look like more full, you know, like they are making contact with the side of the chip as well. So I think that might be I don't know, that might be okay. That might be okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go onto the other side of the board. I'm gonna start concentrating on this USB port here. Now unfortunately all the things have been ripped off. They're definitely missing there. But what I'm wondering is would it be possible to just expose a tiny little bit of copper? If I could just expose a tiny bit of copper on each of them, I might be able to run a little wire. If I can get exposed here, get a bit of solder onto there, then I might be able to run a wire from there to there. But there's nothing else I can do because I'm not going to be able to find where these come up on the board. Uh, well, I mean, look, that, that is a lie I could possibly find because what I have got here is a board with most of the components removed. So for example now, you can see here that I've got the pads here, but the thing is, if I trace it from here, then yes, I might find it coming up here, but what happens if I also find it coming up here? Maybe it needs to go to one before the other or something like that. So I think that's gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna be hard, and some of them might go directly to this chip itself, in which case I'm not gonna be able to do it anyway, because obviously the chips are on this board here. So for example, if one of them was to go into the middle of this BGA chip here, then I'm not gonna be able to run a wire to that, and the chances of all of these just going to nice little resistors and big capacitors and stuff is probably gonna be pretty unlikely. So I think my only option really is to try to scrape back and get a tiny bit of solder on, and, uh, see what happens. If it works as a handheld switch, that's, that's definitely better than nothing because it wasn't working at all before. But if there's a way that I could get it to dock with a portable uh, dock, then that would, be, that would be nice. So that's what I'm gonna work on now. Again, it's gonna be through the microscope, so I'm just gonna be scraping back to begin with, and I'll be just updating on the video. Right, just a quick update on what I'm doing. So I've got my little cheapy microscope down here, and what I'm doing is, because the pads are ripped off, I can't actually get to them, you know, the, the remains, there's not enough, there's not enough left of them, they're completely ripped off. So on this board here, I'm running tiny little wires on each of the contacts. So you can see there, just on the top rail there, I've got a little wire. I'm putting the tone down it, and I'm finding out where it comes from. So, so far, the one on the right hand side here is, I mean, this might be helpful for other people as well, the one on the right hand side here is the ground. The next one there actually goes to this pad here, you know, for the little filter. And then the next one along, so the third one in, goes to the other little bit of the filter here. So I've got a feeling most of them are gonna be going to this video chip. So what I'm doing is I'm running tiny little wires. This is enameled wires, so it doesn't matter if it touches each other. And I'm running them from each of the pins around to here. Now I don't know how it's gonna go because obviously Every time you tap the solder iron on one, it seems to knock it off another one. But I'm getting through it bit by bit. I have been a busy bee. That has taken me one hour, 40 minutes, believe it or not, to do all that. And what I have done now is run little enameled wires from every single top pin to every little place on the board. Now, I'm slightly worried, I'll tell you why. You know these little filters that I was talking about? Only so many of them are used because I've been doing a bit of tracing and it's the hidden USB pins that go to the other one. So I'm a little bit confused about this one way and another way. When it's using the other way, is it still using the pins because they're just mirrored? So I've got a feeling this is not going to work. So I've, uh, I've done it all out here, so this might be useful to some people. So maybe it would be best to, let's have a look. I'm going to explain it to you. Maybe it would be best to kind of pause the video if you ever need this yourself or take a screenshot or something. And then uh, there, that there. So let me explain it to you and hopefully it will make more sense. So this is a USB port here and these are the top pins, the pins that I can actually see. Let's use this donor board here. So these are the top pins that you can actually see. And these are the bottom pins, yeah? So that makes sense, top pins, bottom pins. And then this side here is the video chip and these are all the filters underneath the video chip. And here, this component here is 
this little component here this little black one with six legs and if you have a look up here this component here is this little black one here with six legs yeah so hopefully that makes sense so now let's just quickly talk about what goes where so they're reversible aren't they USB so pin 1 here is actually the same as pin 12 here so pin 1 and pin 12 are ground so pin 12B which is bottom 12B for bottom and 1B are also ground so I've just labeled them up 1 2 3 to 12 and 1 2 3 4 to 12 this way both going in the same direction so 1 is over this side and 12 is over this side on both the top and the bottom. So we've got grounds on the outside, that's fine. Now pins four and pins nine go to the fuse, which you knew because I showed you that earlier and you can actually see the tracks. Pins four and pins nine go up to this little fuse here. I'm calling it a fuse, it could be a resistor, let's just call it a fuse. So now, that is exactly the same on this one here, but instead of four and nine, it's gonna be 4B and 9B. So for example, 4 this side is actually going to be 9 because watch, count from here 4, because remember it's reversible, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 9. So 9B is also going to the fuse and 9 on the bottom is going to the fuse. So that's the same as counting from here 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 4B is also going to the fuse. So 4 and 9 and 9B and 4B, they're all going to the fuse. Now, when it comes to this little chip here, there's a tiny little chip and the two middle pins are actually run via tracks to two little test points here and here, so it makes it nice and easy. And if you have a look here, you can see two nice test points here and here. So this test point goes to the middle pin on the left, this test point goes to the middle pin on the right. And then the left hand test point goes down to number six and the right hand test point goes down to number seven which is also exactly the same as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is 7B. So 7B goes to the left-hand test point, and 6B goes to the right-hand test point, because uh, 6B is actually 7 here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I hope I haven't lost everybody. I've got a feeling I probably have. Now, let's go to the video chip. So I'm just going to stop referring to here for a minute. So when it comes to the video chip, nice and simple. These, uh, oh sorry, let's talk about this one here, this chip next to the video chip down here. So if you have a look on this side here, can you see we also have the chip which is now empty. The middle pin goes to this test pad here and the middle pin here goes to this test pad here. The top test pad is number five on the top USB and the bottom test pad is 8B, eight on the bottom USB. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you see? which is also five, isn't it, if you were counting the other way. So you can see they're the same thing. Now, when it comes to this thing here, on the top pad, it's using eight here on its own, three, two, 10, and 11. So for example, three here is pin three here, goes to here. Pin two here goes to here. Pin 10 here goes to here. Pin 11 here goes to here. And when I say here, I'm talking about the bottom of the filters. You see the bottom of the filters, that's where I've attached all my wires to. There's only five wires, because remember I've only got access to the top pins. The other five would be for the bottom pins. One, two, three, four, five, yeah? So 5B goes to here, 3B goes to here, 2B here, 10B, 11B. So what I'm worried about is, is it gonna work with just two filters and one on this one? I'm not too sure. I think although it's reversible, it's still using the opposite ones, but it's quite late at night now. I've been on this for hours. I've breathed in a lot of solder and flux fumes. I'm wondering whether, I can't quite get my head around this reversible thing to know whether it's using both lots of pins or only one lot of pins. And I'm thinking now because of these video filters, it's actually using both lots of pins. Uh, which is a shame because now it really means that all this work has been for nothing. But what I'm gonna do is see, I'm not gonna, look, not today anyway, I'm not gonna take off this USB port now today, but if everything else on the switch is working, I think I would be tempted. It would mean I've ruined everything I've done today, but look, I've traced everything now, which is really, really important for fixing these in the future. So uh, I think right now I'm gonna put it back together 
I'm not going to put solder mask or anything on it yet because I've got a feeling I'm going to have to come back to this but I don't think the docking will be working in this video. If it does, fantastic. If it works one way round I will be well happy but I don't think it will now because of these filters. But still, I wouldn't have known that unless I was to give it a go. So let's, uh, let's put this back together and uh, let's see exactly what we have. So we're nearly there now, I just uh, need to put the back cover on. I've put fresh thermal paste on it as well and it all looks nice and clean. So uh, let's get the back cover on and then hopefully it's going to be, hopefully we finished. Right, so here we go, we're on the correct input on the TV which is HDMI 1. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, it's gone out, green light's on. There's nothing happening on TV. So look, the green light's on, the screen's gone out here, so it definitely is just uh, pins on the USB, which is stopping it from docking. Right, okay, I, I'm pretty certain it's not gonna work with a port portable dock either, because I think it's just to do with, you do need all the wires connected. And yes, it's reversible, but you still need to have all those little filters working, you know, those little five filters underneath. And right now, we've only got the wires going to some of them. So uh, let's just try the portable dock, just purely out of curiosity, but I know I know it's not going to work. Right, put it in this way. The screen's gone out. But there's nothing displaying on TV. So it looks like the Nintendo Switch is using... Well, it's charging that way, isn't it? So it looks like it is using the top pins for... Looks like the dock's using the top pins for charging. Now let's put it in the other way. Yeah, it hasn't made any difference that way whatsoever. Uh, so that's a shame. So basically at this moment in time, it's just gonna be used as a handheld switch. Okay, so next day now, and I charge it up overnight and it went all the way to 100%, and it's keeping its charge as well. So it looks like the battery is okay. So I'm re-motivated now, and I am gonna try to do these other bottom pins, and then we'll see if it docks. If I do that and it still doesn't work, then I think it's time to give up but I have to at least give it a go. So I'm just gonna be using my microscope and I'm gonna be using this tiny little wire here and I'm just gonna be fast forward through the whole thing. It's probably gonna take me at least two hours to do. Let's get it stripped down and then start by undoing the massive ground pins at the side to try to lift up. If I can lift up the pin without damaging the pins I've already done, the side ground pins, that would be fantastic. If I can get that USB port off, I would love to not have to do those top pins again, but I think that's gonna be unlikely. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's give it a go and let's see what happens. Got the board out now, so what I wanna do is, you see these little ground ones here that actually hold the USB port in place? This one here, these, this one, and this one. Well, I wanna heat them all up and then I'm hoping I can loosen up the USB port to get to the hidden pins. That's gonna be really hard, especially when I've already run all these wires for the top pins and obviously they're going through the board there because I wasn't expecting to do this originally, otherwise I would have just done this to start with. So uh, I'm gonna use, so I haven't used it in ages, I bought this near enough at the beginning when I started the China Fix videos, this Chip Quick. So what this is, it's really low melt solder. So for example now, let's just say, if, I'm making this up, but let's say if solder melts at uh, call it 350 degrees Celsius, then if this was to melt at maybe 80 degrees Celsius, then mixing them two together, you're gonna bring down the lower overall melting temperature. So what I'm hoping is, if I can put it just on these ones here, then it might melt, probably unlikely, but it might melt before all the solder does, the leaded solder, that's going to all the connections. That's what I'm hoping. I think it's worth a go, because I put a lot of time into doing that, those pins originally. Right, so I've decided to go for 180 degrees Celsius, so let's see what happens now. So I'm hoping that's not going to affect any of my existing wires.
you know what, I'm going to leave it like that. That might give me access to the pins. You can see there, I folded the port right over. And now most of my top pins probably are broken, but some things are still hanging on in there. So I'm going to concentrate now on the hidden pins, which are these ones here and also these pads here. Once I get them sorted, I'll fold it back over and then whatever's not making a contact, I can then run new cables or just re-terminate them. So it's not quite as bad as I thought. Out of the 12 pins, six of them are intact and six of them are not. So even if a professional was to get this and replace the port, it would never, ever, ever work. The only way it's gonna work is by running wires to other parts of the board, because these pins, these pads are not here anymore. And remember, multi-layer board, these pads do not, the tracks are not on the pads just to run short little wires to. They're gonna be going to the places that I showed earlier on in the video. So that's what I'm gonna be working on now. This is gonna take absolutely hours, but that's fine. And uh, then I'll get back to it, hopefully, when I've done the soldering. Okay, it's so hard to see because of all the uh, flux with the lights bouncing off here, but so far I've connected up the grounds on each pins, pins four, and nine together and also the outer grounds here. So first one, the last one and the middle two because they're all going to the same tracks. You can see on the tracks here, they're linked up to here and here. So I might as well just link pin to pin here. So now I've done that, now I've got the hard bit to actually connect up these to the remaining pads and these remaining ones to the other parts on the board. Right, okay, we're getting there. I worked out a bit of a system. If I kind of put the wires in between the bottom pins, they want to kind of stay in place because they're all slightly staggered. The bottom pins are staggered to the top ones. So they're all the hidden pins wired up now here. I just need to wire up all the other ends. So I did it all in one go there. So now I need to go one by, go through one by one and put them to where they need to run to on the actual board. Right, and now I'm bit by bit working my way through the top pins, but I have been on this now for at least, I would say two hours. So uh, it's going okay though, I think. What I'm worried about though is I'm using enameled wire, but I'm worried that if you tap it with a soldering iron, it might take the enamel off. And then you see I might get shorts where they're all gone together because I haven't really done very good cable management. Okay, I finished. So I think they're all in the right place. Whether or not some of these wires are gonna be shorter with each other, I don't know. But I'm not gonna put any glue gun on it yet. So this is the side that looks a mess. Remember, there's a load of pins underneath it as well with the wires coming out. So it's very hard, really, to do neatly. This side looks a lot better because there's just a lot, a lot less wires run. But these solder ones here are absolutely tiny. Yeah. But I'm actually happy with how it's gone. It all looks a bit fluxy and sticky. But I'm gonna put it back together, see if it works. Then if it does, I'm gonna cover this area in glue gun. And then you see, even if the switch was to be dropped, it'd be unlikely, if it's all covered in glue gun, that these are gonna come apart. See how hard it is there. Some of them look thicker than the others. What I did is on the power ones, I actually wrapped the wires around the, uh, the connections because the power ones in the ground, so power and ground are wrapped, wrapped the wires around because they're the important ones to me because then without them, this switch will never charge. But if the other wires break, it just means it won't dock, which is not actually the end of the world on a, on a switch because it becomes like a switch light. So let's get it back together and then uh, we'll see if it's gonna dock or not. Now just because of the thermal paste, I'm just gonna rest the back on it and I'm just gonna put in a couple of screws just so it doesn't fall around and short anything out. Then we're ready to test. Right, I'm on the correct. HMI channel, here goes. Yes, it's gone out there. Come on, come up on the TV. Yes, yes, brilliant. I did it. 24 pins of 0.1 wire and I've got it working. Oh yes, that is fantastic. Let's just double check. It's not a fluke, so it comes on here. Come on, you can do it. You can do it again. Oh, brilliant, I'm so happy I persevered with this. So this switch was a bit of a one from hell, really. So we had a faulty video chip, faulty digitizer, and we had to do a serious amount of work to the USB port. So there's three things wrong with this, but that is just brilliant. So what I'm gonna do now, there's no point in filming anymore. This, I've got hours and hours of footage. That soldering took me, I don't know, three hours or something today. And I spent hours and hours on this yesterday. Uh, so all I'm gonna do now is take that little metal cover off the back, 
put glue gun all over those wires so they can't go anywhere and then put it back together or I might even use a solder mask. Do you know what? Solder mask might be a nicer job than the glue gun because I know it's working so it's a permanent repair now. I'm going to, do you know what? I am going to use UV solder mask on that so that's that kind of green gloopy stuff that you put the UV lights on. But uh, I'm ending the video there. I'm so, so happy that I got it working. Let's just make sure the Joy-Cons are working. Excellent, and they're also working from a distance as well. So that's good, that's working, and that's working. So what a result. Massive thanks to Mike for sending this out to me. Also, if you look up in the top right, can you see that it is actually charging? So uh, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. I suppose the last thing we can check is to make sure it is charging in both, uh, both way round, because remember, it wasn't doing that yesterday. So let's just check that now. Let's get the switch down here. And get the power supply out. Let's see now, is it gonna charge both directions? Charging, that way, good. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you see the, the green light up here? And take it out. And now let's do it this way around. Excellent, charging both ways as well. What a result, so, so, so happy with that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.